Hello everyone, I'm Alberto Pallecchi and I'm a program manager at WRI, the World Resources Institute. We are a non-profit organization that uh, research, design and carry out practical solutions at the intersection of environment and development. We focus on seven urgent challenges, food, forest, water, ocean, cities, energy and climate, plus four cross-cutting areas, business, economics, equity and finance. We are a fairly big organization with over 1,400 staff in 12 international offices around the world, including in Europe, where I'm located, working with partners to put the planet on a more sustainable pathway. WRI has been active for over 40 years uh, to support the ecological transition, and our approach has always been the same, an organization with a vision for a data-driven, science-based work that leads to policy change. We have been working to protect uh, nature and make organizations accountable, whether it was by setting global standards such as the Greenhouse Gas Protocol or designing innovative uh, environmental policies and programs. There are uh, a few examples uh, of current projects that we are working on that uh, are supporting this transition. A third example could be the work that we are doing to drive the transition to sustainable mobility. In North America, we are working uh, on the electric school bus initiative. While millions of students ride the bus to school every day, less than 1% of these buses are electrified. Over the course of the next five years, we will create the momentum to electrify the entire fleet of US school buses, overcoming the cost, infrastructure and policy barriers to get there. Cities are where most pollution happens and buildings are responsible for one third of uh, global energy demand and one quarter of global greenhouse gas emissions. We are working on a project called Zero Carbon Building Accelerator that supports the development of national roadmaps and city action plans for building decarbonization. We are also supporting uh, forest restoration. Uh, obviously, forests have to be at the center of our climate solution. AFR 100 is a program that aims at restoring 131 million hectares of land in Africa, where 70% of the population depend on it. We recently created a system change lab that identifies the shifts that can help accelerate the transition needed to reach net zero emissions halting biodiversity loss and building a fairer economy. Finally, I would like uh, also to mention two examples that are very dear to me, the Water, Peace and Security Partnership, a consortium of organizations working to prevent and mitigate water-related conflict around the world, and WRI Faith and Sustainability Initiative, an effort we recently started to support faith-based organizations that wish to pursue science-based approaches to sustainability and climate action. These are only a few examples of the kind of challenges WRI embrace uh, to find and promote practical solutions for system-wide change at scale that ensures people and nature can thrive. We are making progresses, uh, but not nearly fast enough, and we know that uh, science is uh, clearer than ever. To keep global warming within 1.5 degrees Celsius, we must have emission this decade, while reducing inequality and restoring nature. On uh, your second question, what I do on my daily life to support this transition, I think this is an important question indeed. Uh, while it's critical to work at the corporate and institutional level, our personal choices have the power to influence and drive change. Personally, I try to be considered in my daily life and adopt sustainable habits, whether it is sustainable consumption, food choices or mobility. I live in, an, in a city, Amsterdam, that has more bikes than inhabitants and that has a size and infrastructure that in a way facilitates sustainable choices. Not owning a car and learning to drive a bike under every possible meteorological condition is the norm over here. I try to keep this attitude when I go back to my own town in Italy, taking public transport or using shared mobility options uh, as much as possible. Food uh, is another field where uh, we as consumers can certainly do a lot. And in the last few years, I made simple changes to my diet and I enjoy plant-based food as much as possible. 
but perhaps the most important and difficult thing I try to do in my daily life is to have a critical mindset when it comes to purchasing stuff, whether it means using an old smartphone, doing groceries at the local markets or repairing clothes rather than buying new ones. Simple things uh, that, uh, when accessible, can support a local circular economy. On your last question about inspirational figures in the ecological field, um, there are many individuals that could be mentioned as an inspiration for the ecological transition that we need to see today, from uh, Jane Goddell to Nobel Peace Prize laureate Vangari Matai to indigenous leaders and activists such as Berta Cáceres and many others. But uh, if I would have to mention one single person from our days, I would pick Pope Francis. I think uh, the publication of the Laudato Si Encyclical on the environment in 2015 was an identifying, unifying moment for the environmental movement around the world. Whether you are a religious person or not, it is undeniable that the call for caring for our common home, listening to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor is the type of message the, the world needs today. While this message is certainly not new, it comes at a moment where Alongside technology and policy, we need more than ever an ecological conversion of the minds and the souls, knowing that everything in this world is interconnected, and you cannot treat climate change, the acceleration of injustice and inequalities around the world separately. I believe that we as researchers, uh, scientists and practitioners need to work with all actors, from governments to businesses to the faith or indigenous communities, to build movements for change that also look at the spiritual values needed for healing ourselves and the world. Thank you for having me. Goodbye.